Hello there, Pastor Reed from Online Bible Church. Thank you for joining me for another little Bible review. We are going to look at the KJV Turquoise Reference Edition. This came today. Um, I ordered this from Evangelical Bible, and I've ordered from them before. It's, it's always been a, a good experience. I like to have my Bibles imprinted with my name. You'll see that in a second. Um, and sometimes that slows things down. Sometimes it takes a day or two for them to do that. But actually, in this case, it didn't. I ordered it in the morning, and by that afternoon, they I uh, got an email saying it was picked up by the courier. So um, very, very good experience with uh, Evangelical Bible. Now, the reason why I bought this Bible is because I have been preaching out of a Thompson chain. And people ask me, what Bible do you preach from? And I say, I preach from a Thompson. And they're like, what, really? The text is so small. So um, what I wanted to do was I went and I did some research on what would be a very good Bible, an easy-to-read Bible, to preach from. Something with larger print, but not a huge Bible. And I watched um, different reviews on different Bibles, and this was the one that I settled on. And this is the KJV Turquoise Reference Edition. Um, and this is a black goatskin leather edge line. This is from Cambridge. Now, right off the bat, I notice, and I have another Cambridge Bible. I have a personal Concord. And the box that that came in was a glossy. And this one is a matte finish. And almost, I would, I would probably say I like this matte uh box better. It's a very, very nice looking box. Um, some information on the back. I'm going to read this to you. The turquoise reference edition of the King James Bible was created in the 1920s and has stood as a superb and well-loved example of a classic Cambridge uh, typographic design for over 90 years. Well, now, if it came out in the 1920s, it's 100 years now. The large format allows the text to be presented in a comfortably readable form using bold traditional typeface with cross references. For this edition, the concordance has been freshly typeset and the Bible includes a translator's preface, their compelling account of the principles underlying the publication of the KJV in 1611. Now the features of this Bible is, uh, it is a red letter text. So words of Christ are in red. Uh, translator's preface. References, so it is a center column reference. We'll see that when we uh, open it up here in a minute. Uh, pronunciation marks. Concordance printed on ultra-thin, smooth, and opaque, lightweight paper. A family record section. Presentation page. Art gilt page edges, red under gold. Now, I don't think I have a Bible. This is the first Bible that I've had that actually has art gilt edges, red under gold. I have... Um, just regular gilted edging with uh, gold and silver, but never art gilt, so I'm actually quite excited about that. A map section, two ribbon markers, sewn binding enables Bible to open flat, goatskin leather cover with real leather lining. And on the back here, there is an example of what the text looks like in this Bible. Very, very readable. And I would actually say this is, this is not a large print Bible, but it's a large print Bible. It's a clamshell box, opens. Now, I have taken this Bible out um, when I got it. I uh, opened it up. I broke it in. I prayed over it. I always pray over my Bibles when I receive them. Um, and so um, I have looked at this uh, before doing this video. Now, inside the front cover, there were two little inserts here. Cambridge Bibles, Four Centuries of Craftsmanship, as well as a limited warranty. And also edge-lined Bibles, a little insert about that. So let's put the box to the side here. Let's have a look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. This is a goat skin. Uh, very, uh, very nice feel to it. Of course, you can't feel it through the video, but just trust me, it feels very nice. It's very, very, very flexible. Um, it is perimeter stitched. Um, on the front, it says Holy Bible. I have my name imprinted on it. Um, the spine says Holy Bible, King James Version, Red Letter Edition, Cambridge with their logo. 
and the Bible hubs, which are very nice. They feel very good uh, in the hand. Now, this is not a particularly thick Bible, but it, it does have quite a large footprint. So you can kind of see my hand here. And uh, yeah, it's not a huge Bible, but once we open it up and we look at the text, you're going to be blown away with how large and readable this text is. So we're going to open it right on the inside. This is genuine leather. This is actual leather. And most uh, Bibles, they have like uh, a synthetic leather, leather, sorry, a leather or a uh, like a vinyl and it's paste down. Not the case with this. This is actual leather and it is perimeter stitched. So it's kind of carried over and then stitched in with this underneath. And you can see the tab here, how it is tabbed in. So these pages don't fully pull apart and you never want to pull these pages apart. That is there to stabilize the spine. So inside you get um, some cardstock here and you get a presentation page or a this Bible belongs to page. Now generally I fill this out, but I haven't yet. I wanted to show you this before I filled it out. So you have a couple of pages of family records that you can fill out, and this is on um, card stock, um, children and marriages, marriages and grandchildren. Deaths, and then you have the title page to the Bible. Now you can see how classic looking this is. This is straight from the 1920s. This is kind of like opening a time capsule. And in one of the videos that I watched where they reviewed this Bible, the, the man that did the review said, this is like opening a time capsule from the 1920s. So this is absolutely beautiful. The paper... It is very, very smooth. And the text, like the, the writing is very, very easy to read. It's very dark, it's very bold, but yet not a whole lot of bleed through. There is a little bit of bleed through, but um, with how thin this paper is and how dark this print is, I'm surprised there's not more bleed through. That just goes to show the quality of the paper and the quality of this Bible. Um, also, while we've got it open here, I wanna show you the art gilt edging, see? You've got your two ribbon markers, both red, and they're a good thickness too, they're very nice. Um, not tremendously long, which is great because when they get too long, they kind of get caught and snagged on things, I find. Um, but also, on the pages, they, they have, and when you kind of turn it like this, you can kind of see how it becomes red. So they put red on it and then put the gold over top. So we have the Epistle Dedicatory to the Most High and Mighty Prince James. And this is a very nice uh, epistle dedicatory. Most King James Bible do have the epistle dedicatory. It also has the translators to the readers. Now, not every King James Bible has this. In fact, I think the only other Bible that I have that has the translators to the readers in it is a Westminster. So that goes on for a couple of pages. And I would encourage you, if you love the King James like I do, um, to actually read that because it really gives... A lot of interesting information. So here we have kind of like a table of contents, all the books in the Bible, um, books of the Old Testament and the books of the New Testament. So if you're new to the Bible, um, you're newly saved, you're not quite sure how to navigate a Bible, and you're in church and the pastor says, turn to, uh, let's say, Hosea and you don't really hear preaching out of that book very often. You might not know where that is. And so you can come here and look and find out what page that is, and as well, the number of chapters in that particular book. We need to remember, the Bible is one story, one complete Bible, but yet it contains 66 different books, yet tells one beautiful story. 
So we have how to use a self-pronouncing text. Now we have the first page of Genesis. Now you will see right off the bat how dark and readable and wonderful this type is. Um, this is why I picked this Bible to preach from, because look at that. You can, I could have this at the other end of the table and still be able to read it. Like there's, the words just leap off the page. The text is very, very dark. And the paper is very, very white. I know in the Westminster, the paper is kind of like a beigey cream color, which is nice, but this is so much more readable. Like you can, you have to be almost totally blind to not be able to read this. So we do have our center column references right in the middle. So typical, typical page. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait to preach and do Bible studies from this Bible. Um, and this is the reason why I bought it, as I said, because I was preaching for the last year or so with a Thompson chain. And I'm like, eh, there's got to be something easier, <laughs> something easier to read from behind a pulpit. And did some research and settled on this turquoise. So let's have a look at the red letter. So the red letter is a very dark red, almost like a crimson, very readable. I know in in some particularly older um, red letter, the, the, the red is kind of pink or orange, but this is very, very dark and readable and very, very consistent. Like I know in some Bibles and in, part in particular um, my personal Concord, um, if you look at, let's say, Acts and then look at Leviticus, the text is different in the Old Testament in uh, the beginning of the Bible as well as the end of the Bible, um, the text is darker than it is. Um, so it's not con consistent, uh, bolded text throughout where this is. Like, you look at Acts here, and you look here at the beginning in Exodus, it's the exact same. It's very, very consistent throughout. Now let's have a look and see if it is red letter in Revelation, because that's sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, and this is not. It's all black text, um, other than in the Gospels when Jesus is speaking. So let's have a look at what is in the back. So we have the concordance. Now, in on the box, it says... The concordance has been freshly typeset. So this is a more modern looking concordance. This is not from the 1920s. This is more uh, modern and uh, digital. Now it is three column and I don't know if you can see it very well in the video. I'll bring it a little closer. It is in paragraph form. Sometimes with a concordance and what I prefer in a concordance is that it's listed rather than chunked together in a paragraph. But really, this Bible shines in so many other places that I'm willing to, to forgive them for not having this concordance the way I like it. <laughs> and maybe some people like the paragraphed format of the concordance, I don't know. But anyway, um, after the concordance, we have a list of our maps and these are Cambridge maps that are in the back and actually an index to the maps where you can look up a location find out what map to turn to and then use a grid to find the location of that um, place so 
Uh, map one, the ancient Near East and in the late Bronze Age. Uh, map two, regions of Palestine and surrounding areas. Now these are on kind of a glossy paper. Sometimes maps are on a map cardstock. Sometimes they're glossy. In this case, they are glossy. Map three, Sinai and Canaan in the time of the Exodus and Israel with Canaan. Now this doesn't show the route of the Exodus, which I'm A-OK -okay with because in most Bible maps, they get it wrong. They don't even show uh, crossing through water, which it's very clearly they did. And when they do, they show it in the wrong place. They show it at the top of the, the Gulf of Suez. And I believe, and the evidence points towards archeology span uh, evidence, I did a video on it, that they crossed over here in the Gulf of Aquaba. I did a video on that. Look that up. Uh, map five, the United Monarchy of David and Solomon, and map six, Israel and Judah, the Divided Monarchy. These maps are very nice. Um, they're not cartoony. I've seen um, uh, the Westminster, I believe, have cartoony maps, which have, like, bright colors. These are, are much more pale colors and, and nice. Uh, map 9, the Persian Empire. Map 10, the Hellenistic world after Alexander. I like these maps. Map 11, Jerusalem in Old Testament times. Map 12, Jerusalem in New Testament times. You can see how that city's kind of grown. We've got map 13, Palestine in New Testament times. And map 14, the Roman Empire. As you can see, all of where Rome, um, the Empire of Rome was. And actually, maybe you didn't know this, but a little history lesson. Did you know that England um, was actually part of the Roman colonies? In fact, the, the city of London, that name... Uh, came from what the Romans called it when they moved in there. They called it Londinium. Londinium. And so they dropped the inium part and call it London today. Interesting fact. Um, don't say I never taught you anything. <laughs> Map 15, the Eastern Mediterranean in the first century AD. And this shows um, Paul's missionary journeys and all all of Paul's missionary journeys and his trip to Rome are on one map. Sometimes they uh, they put them in different maps, in separate maps, but not in this case. And I'm fine with that. So again, you've got a couple pages of cardstock and your back spine stabilization page, and then in the back you've got leather lined. So, that is the KJV Turquoise Reference Edition from Cambridge. And do I recommend this? Absolutely. I was blown away with how small this Bible is. Look at how thin that is. And definitely carryable, definitely portable. I can see myself carrying this places. But yet have such large and readable print. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. So this is going to be my new preaching Bible. Um, so I can, uh, I, I love the Thompson chain. Um, I use it a lot in uh, preparing sermons and studies and that type of thing. And I'm still going to, to use it for that. But as far as preaching goes, I think I'm turning to this because it's a little easier to read behind the pulpit. So uh, that is the KJV Turquoise Reference Edition. And so until next time, God bless.